Uh, yeah, hi everybody, this is Tony. Welcome to another episode of Crime Pace with Binders. And today I was coming to you from Esmeralda County, Nevada County, near the Mineral County line. Okay, you could see we're on alkali soil, nice. Okay, that's not just salt, that's salts, which could be a bunch of different minerals. Could be some of the boron coming, the borax, uh, could be some lithium in there too. Okay, all kinds of different minerals with the shit, maybe some magnesiums. Either way, we're here to look at those nice volcanic, uh, those nice volcanic formations out there as you can see uh over uh, on the edge of this marsh uh right here nice you can see over there we got some dodecatheon now in the genus primula okay beautiful mismatch rocks here let's go check it out hey look they got a water trough for the cows and whatnot but it looks quite old like it hasn't been used in a while got a seep right here okay squishy soil <sighs> kind of smells kind of smells weird over here look at this we got a uh Formerly in the genus Dota, Kate, the Anon, the genus Primula, colloquially known as the shooting stars. Some of the first to bloom in the spring when they do go off. Look at that. Kind of succulent foliage down there. Primulaceae is the family here, the primrose family. Not to be confused with the evening primrose family, uh, Onagraceae. Look at those floral structures right there. Look at that long style, that long pink style poking out. A banger in its own right, even though there's only, uh, maybe you got a couple more over there, but only one flowering. Erotica. See, the style of a different uh, uh, length than those uh, five uh, stamens. See, the five stamens just open up like a little hand. See, these, these stamens aren't ready yet, but over here, they're opening up. Okay, just spreading out. Five petals, and again, it's succulent foliage. Look at the corrosion on the tube right there. Someone tried to fix it with a little bit of... Uh, and I don't know what the shit they were doing. Very salty, briny soil here. That's why you got that uh, salt grass. Got some carex too. The smell is very distinct. Look at that. Look at the crust. See, you got a crust on there. See that? Look, look, the, the thistle loves this stuff too, huh? Imagine what it takes to be able to grow in this kind of soil, okay? Waterlogged, but also laden with minerals, too. And, of course, you got that primula. Primula pauciflora. Oh, look at that. Do you see that? Look at those flowers, huh? Primula, see, formerly in the genus Dodecatheon. I like the, I like the genus Dodecatheon more. I like that name more. Look how those uh, anthers just open up like a little hand. Do you see? Like a little hand. But I, you know, I guess they they lumped, they nest, they nested it in with uh, primula, goddamn taxonomist. Better be a good paper on it. I haven't seen it yet. What are you doing? You know you got to get back in a truck. You're gonna get all the filthy, dirty shit all back in a truck over there. Okay, I'm gonna have to have the guy, that crackhead on 18th Street, clean it again. Get over here. Anyway, back to the. You see that? And it's succulent leaves, succulent, smooth leaves, almost looking like Anamopsis, unrelated plant. Yerba mansa, okay? Oh, succulent and juicy. Of course, someone's going to ask, can you eat it? I don't know. Can you put it in your mouth and not die? That's kind of a lowest common denominator for me in terms of plants. I don't care. I mean, I guess good to know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe make a poultice, put it on your ass. Tell me how it goes. Anyway, there you go. Primula pauciflora. All different stages. Inflorescence is an umble. All different stages. Actually, maybe it's more of a sign. It's more of a sign. All, at all different stages of uh, the floral development. Some are old and senescent. Some are just uh, maturing. And there's that thistle. Now look at this. Look at this little bastard we got right here. Lysomachia maritima. Okay. From the primulaceae. Tiny little flowers. Axillary. Just the slightest hint of a pedestal right there. You see that? That little red, uh, red stock of the flower. Five fused petals. And it looks like you got five stamens with that central uh, white pistol in the middle. Pistol being a stigma style over the, the pistol up top. Okay. Look at those glandular leaves. Look like you got little little dots in there look from the glands. Are they, are they glandular? Yeah, they're pretty glandular. Yeah, they're pretty glandular. And see where it's, how it's coming up. See that? Just coming up right uh, amidst all the junkus. Okay. One of the other uh, graminoids that I uh, tend to not, not pay attention to. Gonna be junk as cooper. What the shit is this over here? You got the mushy soil and shit. You like the mushy soil? Hey, you dumb prick. Look at this. 
Look, it's a uh, it's a species of thistle. Looks like it might be a native thistle. Oh, the soil smells really bad right here. Oh, so alkali and mushy, filled with the excess minerals. Probably some anaerobic bacteria too, judging from uh, that terrible, terrible smell. How erratic. Okay, and then right here, growing uh, also in a salt marsh. Now, this is not much to look at, I'm going to be honest. Okay, there's only a first one I've seen. I've only seen one of them. This is triglocan, a species in the genus triglocan from the family Juncaginaceae, not to be confused with Juncaceae, okay? The, the uh, family of rushes. Now, interesting about this, okay, is just taxonomically, this is a more basal lineage, a more early branching lineage in the uh, monocot clade of flowering plants, okay? So this is, uh, you know, a lot of those uh, early branching monocot lineages tend to be uh, heavily riparian, uh, if not aquatic, okay? So they're, they're water plants. Look at those tiny little flowers. Tiny little flowers occurring on its spike. There's those basal leaves, okay? This is only interesting, again, if you got the proper context for it, which is that, you know, it's part of a whole order that, that if you were to look at a phylogenetic tree, a cladogram of monocots, you know, with the 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 youngest members, the newest members on the right, the quote newest members, the oldest members, the more basal lineages would be over to the left, more early branching. So, you know, for me at least, because I appreciate all that shit, this is really interesting to see. And again, there's those tiny flowers. Look at almost succulent like that. See that? Get the, get, get the stamens poking out. How about that? Sure is a nice day out here. Look at that. Money shots. A lot of gnats, but they're not biting, as far as I can tell yet. This thistle's insane. Look at it. You could see, look at it. How's it growing out of it? Look at how goddamn salty, and I say that in quotes because it's not necessarily sodium chloride that we're looking at here. Look at how salty this soil is. Okay? And then again, why, is, why are these arid areas, well, why is the Great Basin salty? Well, number one, you got more evaporation than uh, precipitation uh, going on. Okay? But then second, this, oh, look at you get some cyanobacteria down there. See that green? But uh, also, you know, this is a basin because it doesn't, the water doesn't uh, uh, drain uh, to any ocean. The Great Basin doesn't drain to any ocean. So all the shit, when, those, when it rains on those rocks, weather and erode and you get different ions uh, washing off the rocks and what the shit, they don't wash out the sea. They wash down into the basins where they accumulate and then the water just evaporates and, you, you know, enough... Uh, Hundred thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of years of that shit, and you get this. Ain't it nice? Got a nice color palette right there. Born from a variety of volcanics. See here, they, they got the spring over there. You got one of the uh, wood rushes there. Juncaceae, which, you know, I don't really, I don't really get into them too much because I'm, you know, I'm going to be honest. I just, they don't, they don't woo me. Look at that. Some briny, warm water. Is it warm? Lots of geothermal activity in the Great Basin. Oh, it's not chilly. Mildly warm. Lots of geothermal activity in the Great Basin because the crust is so thin. So, you know, you're a little bit closer to that magma down below. Lots of red pumice. Red scoria. Look at, look at all the damn iron oxide in this bright red. Makes a nice uh, ochre. Amaranthaceae, of course, is the dominant plant family here. Amaranthaceae and Sarcobataceae. Not the most charismatic shrubs, but certainly some charismatic geology. That it looks like someone was uh, digging in at some point in time. Got some ash flow over there. Hot and horny volcanics all around. Slowly the drizzle comes down. Not too bad. Nothing to complain about. Very beautiful here.
Again, thank you, Farallon Plate, for providing us that subduction activity that gave us the volcanic activity that uh, we're enjoying today. You know, the, the beauty of, uh, you know, the Earth's interior. Okay, just belching up different uh, uh, different concoctions of uh, elements to create this uh, beautiful patina, these beautiful hues. Don't know what the shit this was, but uh, it's very crumbly. And it occurred in a matrix of uh, this uh, red stuff. This uh, red volcanics. Very vesicular. Look at all the gas pores in there. Gas pores and bubbles and shit. You know? Oh, that's so nice. Look at these. I mean, seriously, look at these colors. Look, look at this. Huh? Is it, you got some sulfur in there? And you got all kinds of little, uh, uh, phenocrysts that didn't melt. You see that? Little bits of quartz. Is that quartz or feldspars or whatever the shit? Look at the texture of that. You know? More fun than looking at bread when you're high. I used to make fun of people for that. I shouldn't do that anymore. It's not nice. You know, everybody finds joy in their own little, uh, corner of the world. You know? Doing whatever it may be. No, who am I to make fun of? But sister, look at that. Look at that. Uh, look at those colors. A peace be with you and also with you. Okay, now see, look, look at this is ash. You see how ashy it is? Huh? There's all this bit, little bits of shit in there, all cemented together. Okay? A welded tough. That's what you call a welded tough. Okay? Tuffacious rocks. Just a. Uh, you know, volcanics, okay? Maybe uh, maybe they were, uh, you know, gently dropping down from the sky. Maybe it was a massive pyroclastic flow. Who knows? Probably Miocene here. Most of the volcanics in Nevada. Oh, wow. What do you got in there? You got some horn blends and shit? What is that stuff? Look at that. If I can get this piece. You know what that reminds You know what this the texture just reminds me of? The, that scene in Ghostbusters, you know? Where they're pulling a, a Dana and Louis Tully after they turn into a dog, and you know they're they're breaking them out of the the, uh, the uh, uh, dog uh, uh, solidified permineralized dog corpse on top of that apartment building. It kind of reminds me of that. Look, it's still so ashy, still still so powdery, but you got something cemented in there. Get it out. You don't want to breathe this in. You don't want silicosis, okay? You get look at that. Look at this stuff in there. Look at all the stuff in there. Okay. Was it a pyroclastic flow? Was it just gently snowing? I, you know, I can't, I can't, I couldn't tell you. But again, probably, yeah, probably Miocene in, uh, in age right there. So we're talking about 25 to 5 million years. I don't know. I, maybe it's older. I didn't look. Look at how ashy that is. Look, that's a mouthful of silicosis right there. Beautiful rocks, though. And the uh, Sarcobatus likes it. And then, you, you know, you look at that over there, and, uh, you know, the Mount Breeder's got to come out here. What is that, a bunch of rednecks shooting up a TV? You don't do that out here in a place like this. You do it uh, in the Ikea parking lot or in a, you know, the, the strip mall parking lot of some upscale suburb like a good teenage degenerate. You don't got to do that out here. Don't come out here and soil this spot. Oh, my God, look at what a cute little Artemisia that is, huh? Smells nice, too. Same genus as a Great Basin Sagebrush, but this is a much more diminutive one. With a much uh, different leaf structure. More lacy, more dainty. And of course, there's those uh, flower heads, tiny little flower heads. We are talking sunflower family here. Look at that. How about that? Look at that. That's beautiful. A beautiful briny lake. A dry, salty lake. Actually, there might be a little bit of water in there. Could be. Nothing like ancient Lake Lahontan, though, okay? The now extinct Lake Lahontan. And we're graced with the rainbow over there. Do you see that? All the different colors, okay? I think it's a good sign, okay? Or it could be an omen. I don't know. Probably more like an omen. But let's just, uh, let's try to have an optimistic attitude, okay? What's at the end of that rainbow, huh? A little leprechaun telling you to go fuck yourself. You just took a dump on your dashboard. Anyway, it's a beautiful day out here in a great basin in central Nevada. Okay, we got a big mishmash of rocks. 
lots of volcanics, okay? Predominantly volcanics, but you're gonna get some limestone in there too. And look at the, look at all that erosion going on over there. All the weathering and erosion. Anyway, let's keep moving on down the road towards the uh, Silver Peak uh, Range over there. Got a lot of snow up there. Huh? How about that hashtag wanderlust? You know, the other, the other thing you get in the Great Basin that's pretty nice is you get a lot of hot springs. Lots of geothermal activity, again, because uh, that lithosphere is so thin here. Because Salt Lake and Reno are moving across, moving away from each other. So you're getting that extensional uh, uh, faulting, okay? You know, horsed and grabbing, as they call it. And also, uh, aside from that, yeah, like I said, the lithosphere is thinner. So that magma is closer to the surface, heating up the water and what the shit. So you got all these hot springs out there. Maybe you go there, maybe you'll see some... Uh, you know, uh, uh, naked hippies in there. Maybe you'll see some old guys, you know, with their saggy nuts in there. I don't know, you know. Uh, it used to be you go to these hot springs even 10 years ago and there'd be no one there. Now you go and there's like five cars in the parking lot. So hashtag wanderlust, hashtag van life, I guess, huh? See, they're already driving the coots away. You know, the, they never hang out. The coots never want to hang out with you, okay? They always dip out the minute you show up. Hey, why? Why? Come here. I just want to hang out with you. Why don't you just come sit in my lap or something? It, it, platonically. Oh, look. He's got a little guy with him. Look what we got here. Do you see what we got here? A species of tetradymia. See, just covered in these little, these little beetles, these little flies. Oh, it looks just like flies. Now, there's some beetles. There's some flies bunch of stuff one of the, another one of those wonderful desert composites and look at the new growth look almost looks like a like a pine tree candle you know so they call it the, the uh, new growth on pine trees they call them candles let's take a close look at those flowers i'm gonna bum these guys out look this guy's got his ass sticking out of a he's got his ass sticking out of that flower right there look at those uh look at those corolla lobes just poking out look look little so no no rays, no no ligules, no daisy rays, just five five little corolla lobes and a couple florets in each uh, capitulum. See there's a single capitulum right there. See there's the involucre, the little vase that holds the flowers. And it looks like you got, I don't know, three or four little uh florets poking out of there. Look at that. that that's an interesting rack. Large grain size, but the color there is uh, the real banger. Could it be secondary alteration, huh? Look at the large, large, large grains, large crystals of a uh, feldspar quartz or some shit in there, huh? It's nice. See, look, there's plenty of nice rocks out here. Look at it. Look at the color on it. Look at the color palette on it, huh? See, this is why I don't get an abstract art, because these goofy fucks are trying to do what nature does, except they can only half-ass it. They'll never do it as good. You can see the geology is just a general mishmash, though. All alluvial deposits, okay? A few million years of those mountains, those, uh, you know, 400 million year old mountains, at least if we're talking limestone. The volcanics are much younger. It's a few million years of those mountains just slowly eroding. Slowly eroding and weathering. You know, so like maybe that chunk over there came from over there. Maybe that chunk came from the mountains over there. You never know. Look at this. Nice annual buckwheat, Ariagonum. Uh, Nigelarium. It's a dainty fucker, huh? Look at the branching structure on it. And they still look nice even when they're done. Look how tiny those flowers are. Those are the flowers, those tiny white, uh, those little tiny white bastards and, uh, at the axles right there. See that? See, there's one open right there. So tiny. Get your hand lens out, fuck. Look at that. Now that is the damn penstemon. Look at it. Look at how it's swollen and enlarged that uh, lower part of that corolla is. You see that? Just beneath those three fused petals that uh, form that lower labium. Because remember, we got two lips, right? One on the top, one on the bottom. Two fused petals up top for the top lip, three fused petals for the bottom lip. That thing's so swollen, just perfect size to fit a bee's ass. Get them in there, okay? So this is an obvious bee-pollinated uh, penstemon, not a hum, not a hummingbird pollinated penstemon, and there's the seeds from it. See, you see that? So that's what you do. You just take these things out, 
I can hear them already in there. Flip them over like that, all the little seats come out, you put them in a little drug baggie, okay, to get the police excited when they stop you next. And there's a lot of fucking mean cops in Nevada. Holy shit. You go to these uh, rural spots in Nevada, there's cops all got hard-ons for anyone that uh, doesn't look like a pasty wafer, all right? They'll roll you right over, okay? Or, or if you look like a pasty wafer, say you got like a little goth thing going on, okay? They'll roll you. You look a little out of the order, they'll roll you right away. But that is a that is a nice penstemon. Opposite leaves, of course, glabrous, no hairs, waxy, rubbery, and look at that. Perfoliate leaves. Perfoliate goddamn leaves. Where's the beard tongue on this guy? Does he got one? He's got a little stamina down there. See that? And then there's a style up top. See? Poking out between those two anthers. He's got fuzz up top too. That is a goddamn penstemon. Holy shit. Look how bulb is so bulbous. Right, zygomorphic corolla, look at that, you got those stamens curling up inside, okay, like you do on most penstemons up top, you can see them right there with a little style poking out, then you get the stamen out, down there, see a little beetle, I don't know what he's doing down there, he's dicking around doing something down there, see there's a, there's a better money shot of that stamen out, but look at that, just the, the, almost looks like a damn cypripedium labellum, how bulbous that goddamn uh, base of that corolla is. And right near that penstemon, we got a nice uh, Satherodes annua, one of the turtlebacks. Satherodes is a genus of turtlebacks. Satherodes ramosissima is a real turtleback. This one still has that uh, nice uh, leaf texture that gives the genus the name turtleback. But, uh, you know, it's, it's not as dense. It's not clustered as dense as Satherodes ramosissima. And again, look at it. Look at it. Look at that texture. Look at the texture to those leaves. All the little scales, Asteraceae, gotta love desert composites, discoid flowers, no daisy rays, fuzzy, it's fuzzy. Look at this, and who doesn't love a desert flax, huh? A beautiful desert flax. Lancloisia cetocissima. Look at those, look at those spiny, look how spiny those leaves are. But those flowers, those flowers are gorgeous. Let's see if we can uh, actually focus on this damn thing. Could show you the blue anthers on an individual flower. Oh yeah, there you go. The speckling on those five petals. The calyx is spiny as hell. Can barely see it behind the leaves, but those anthers are blue. And you got striations on their little nectar guides. Goddamn incredible. I, I love that. And you can't show me a desert member of, of the family Polymoniaceae that I don't love. Okay, so over there, you can see where we got that rare buckwheat that they wanted to demolish to put up the lithium mine. And then over here, we got a transition to limestone, okay, where Louie's sitting over there thinking of fuzzy handcuffs. And then right here, we got a really rare member of the uh, sunflower family Asteraceae. This is Hecastocleis shocklii, and its closest relatives are in the Andes, down in goddamn South America. There's the little capitula, okay, the, the flower heads. Just not going off yet, but you can see they're covered in these these goddamn massive bricks with the spines on the margins. And look at that. Leaves, not much to look at. Fascicled leaves. And then they got this mean bastard's got these little spiny branches coming off too. See, so you peel back one of those bricks like I just did. And you can see right there, you got all those individual capitula. Each capitulum, which is the singular form of that word, is analogous to one uh, sunflower head. All right, same family, okay? So what, a sunflower again is just a capitulum, okay, a sudanthium, a false flower composed of many tiny individual flowers. In the case of sunflowers, Helianthus annuus, each capitulum has uh, hundreds of tiny florets. Hundreds of tiny flowers called florets, okay? But in the case of Hecastocleis, each, cap each capitulum, those green little rods with the roof and shingle bracts pointing up on them, each capitulum only has one flower in it only has one florid in it how about that what a weird what a weird plant and what's with these bracts those massive bracts that protect the protect the flower head but again he's not much to look at if you're just passing by him just looks like another mean spiny shrub with fascicled leaves in a goddamn desert but you'd have no idea how important he is taxonomically as a member of the uh, asteraceae really weird uh, more basal 
branch of that uh, sunflower family tree, that phylogenetic tree. Look at this here, and here we got one of the Enceliopsis going off. It's a dry year, but apparently they got enough uh, moisture in this little wash, okay? And there's enough moisture in this little wash for this guy to be blooming. You can see that, look, he's got a woody caudex. Look at it, look how thick that caudex is on this goddamn thing. So those leaves can just die back, and he dies back to that little subterranean woody caudex. And then, uh, you know, when it's a good year, he sends leaves out again, gets some moisture, and then boom, he starts uh, starts blooming. Look at the phyla he's in. Look at the phyla. just covered in the scales and the trichomes. Nice. I love this fucking genus. Okay? Three species in that genus. Hey, I don't think they got enough rain here this year, but apparently they did. Okay? And this little wash for him to be going off. He's going off in between the transition uh, from the sort of teams buckwheat grows on and the much older Precambrian limestones. And then right there, look, Castilea cremosa again. Hiding out, huh? Look at that. Nice member of the honeysuckle family right here. Okay? Smells incredible. Oh, Symphoro carpos. I could smell it from here. Very pleasant. Look at those opposite leaves. Okay? One of the giveaways that it's a honeysuckle. Uh, should you not catch it in flower? But this thing smells, oh, it smells so pleasant. Look at that. Five petals in a trumpet-shaped corolla. The calyx is all the way down there at the base. See the green sepals? Oh my God, it smells so pleasant. It smells so nice. It smells so nice, okay? Too bad the Castellet is stealing from it because they're hemi-parasites, all right? They can make a little bit of their own, their own energy from photosynthesis, but he's stealing a little bit from this guy, too. There you go. See over in the distance, that's where the lithium mine's gonna go. Right there on uh, population six. Uh, that uh, team's buckwheat. Just um, imagine it. Just a massive fucking open pit mine there. Isn't that nice? There's those lithium and ion, uh, uh, excuse me, lithium rich soils, lithium and uh, boron rich soils. And then there we go, sticking out. Just sticking out like a pair of fuzzy handcuffs in the back seat of someone's car. You got a castocleis again. A castocleis shaklii. Hecastocles, how do you want to pronounce it? Again, it likes that transition. See that? It's right on a transition again. Got another one right there. Not big shrubs right here. You can also see them in Death Valley at elevations above uh, 5,000 feet. Looks like the white mountains over there are getting a dusting, huh? That's where those bristle cones grow, the bristle cone pines. They got to put some lights up there for the holidays on those things, you know? You know, I was hoping one of these would be uh, blooming, but looks like we're like a, a few days too early. What a drag. Tales of a phenological woe. You know, anyways, that's it's still a pretty cool find. Pretty rare plant and only a few of them right here. Right on the interface between the two soil types. I think there were like three or four here and then a couple down more a couple more down that way in a wash well anyway i'm gonna wrap that up that's about it that's enough uh putzing around for me today hopefully you enjoyed that we were all over the place we ran the volcanics we went to the hot spring and saw the coots we uh came back to the buckwheat spot you know, we were all over the place. Okay, just uh, finaling flowers, peeling back bricks, flipping shit around, talking about fuzzy handcuffs, all kinds of weird shit, all right? Just like we do every time, okay? Just like we do all the time. I love taking you guys out here with me. I'm glad you get to see this, because a lot of it's probably fucked. A lot of it's, uh, <laughs> a lot of it's not long for this world, the way the human tumor's gone, okay? Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Hope you have a wonderful, uh, rest of your day, your night, your week, whatever you're doing over there, okay? In the chaos of the modern day, okay? You can watch the decline, watch the societal collapse, okay? Maybe start some flowers, bring yourself up a little bit too. That's all I got. Why don't you have a good uh, rest of your night? Go fuck yourself, bye. Look at it, so you're getting all the good stuff. 
on a transition zone between the uh, lithium chalks and the, the limestone over here. Okay, look, we got that penstemon barnaby eye coming up again. Hasn't bloomed yet. Okay, we got the symphora carpos. Okay, smells like bubble gum. God damn it. And then you got the, this guy, this member of the Fabaceae, Faboidae subfamily. Just take one look at those flowers. You can see them right there. You got the banner. You got the wings. You got the keel. See that? The banner's kind of flipped back like that. Okay, you can't even see the keel. It's in between those two wings. Astragalus. Look at those leaves. You can tell it's this bastard's a desert plant. Look at how narrow they are. White, covered in the scales, covered in the fuzz. Look up close at the stem. See? Got the, got a little bit of hairs on them. See those white, uh, tiny white trichomes and hairs? It's a banger. Got the red stem down there, too. See that? God damn. Always blows my mind how some of this stuff makes it out here. You know, how do you do that? Huh? How do you grow in a spot that gets five inches of rainfall? Oh, look at this. Is this a Phloxa Stansbury eye? Yeah, it looks like it. But it, normally they're pink. This guy doesn't have any pink. Polymoniaceae, the Phlox family. Look at, see this calyx? Several form corolla, five fused petals, and the anthers are way down in there. In that corolla. It's a banger. Ariagonum numulae right there. Going off. Pleasant day in the desert. thought these were stipules, those spiny bastards. They're just leaves. They're just the uh, first year leaves. Here's some fresh growth that just emerged. See that? They're just leaves and they die. The stem stays alive. The leaves die, become very hard and spiny, and then boom, you get a new uh, bunch of leaves in a little fascicle that uh, emerge out of second year. That's kind of interesting, huh? Again, what a rare plant. And there it is, just the current right, right the uh, on the interface between the uh, lithium-rich uh, chalky shit and the uh, the limestones.